this is Pukeology Podcast, where science meets your hilarious puke stories and the tips and tricks to stop that up chuckle that you need. You never know what's going to spew out of her mouth. Here's my mama, Dr. Puke Nemo. Have you ever wondered, can I actually wear high heels whenever I'm pregnant? Or why is it that my feet are getting bigger and they just don't fit in shoes anymore? If you're curious about it, this podcast is absolutely perfect for you. Episode 66, can I wear high heels during pregnant? Well, let me, your favorite doctor, explain to you why. Do you want no more morning sickness, pregnancy nausea, or how about no more headaches or migraines? Visit our sponsor, nomonausea.com, the only natural way to instantly stop your worst nausea, vomiting, or headaches now. And get 25% off with the code PUKE, P-U-K-E, 25, that's Puke 25, or just place your Nomonaja ban on your baby registry for your delivery bag at Bye Bye Baby or get it shipped for free in just two days as an Amazon Prime vendor. And make sure that you know your little ones are always taken care of with the first Nomonaja Kids and Nomo Sleepless Nights Kids. Here's a hint, mommies. It also works for moms with small wrists too. Now available at your local Walmart stores. Do you want some hilarious pregnancy humor that may just make you want to pee your pants? Like you don't have to pee all the time anyway, with hilarious stories like puke or paddle, up chuck granola nuts, waterboarding. If you want to learn more about your pregnancy, humor and knowledge is to help you, and this is the key to help you survive these nine months. And just know we're in this together. Today, you will learn the science behind is wearing high heels a good idea? Why do your pregnancy feet change during pregnancy? And what are some amazing ways to help you have the best pregnancy while on your feet? All here today in Pregnancy Pugology Podcast, Episode 66, Can I Wear High Heels? The Science of Puke, Pugology. So you're probably wondering, well, I was able to wear high-heeled shoes before I was pregnant, so what's anything different? Well, when you're pregnant, your growing baby becomes the center of attention. And you go to different extents of avoiding things that may be health hazards. Not saying that high-heeled shoes are health hazards, but you have an increased risk of potential damage, meaning you could have a slip and fall. Things of that nature can actually become. And one thing that we as doctors like to say is we like to ask you to avoid to wear high heels, and we'll get into more of this in the end. But I will say that it's not that great of an idea, and trust me, by your third trimester, you will probably look like you're stuffing snossages inside of these little, small, high-heeled shoes. So why should you avoid wearing high High heels during your pregnancy. Many women who are used to wearing high heels find it challenging to avoid them while pregnant. Let's face it, ladies, we always want to look cute in all of our outfits. But if you are caring for your unborn baby and for yourself, wearing high heels is something to do that you may have to do away with during your pregnancy. And here are some reasons why you should let go of the pumps and exchange them for some nice, comfy flip flops and or well-supported sneakers. Number one, back pain. Pregnancy does alter your body shape. The growing baby increases the weight of your body and your belly, causing this shearing back pain. Wearing high heels makes back pain even worse. They raise your center of gravity and shift your balance forward. Besides, pregnancy hormones make your ligaments in your low back really loose. It makes it loose in your low back, your pelvis, and your lower limbs, which can weaken the actual ligaments and the muscle surrounding them. What do you think happens when you have a weak ligament that is attaching to those muscles? Boom! All of a sudden, you could potentially be falling. So think of like a baby fawn, which is a baby deer. You kind of lose your stability, and when you're on these high-heeled spikes, you could actually lose your balance very easy and result in a fall. And that's the last thing that we want from our mommies. Besides, pregnancy hormones can also affect what 
we call the ligaments inside of the feet. So remember relaxin, the pregnancy hormone that we've been talking about before, that's what opens the hips up so that the baby is ready for that birth canal. Well, it happens, relaxin is not just specific for your hips. Instead, it also affects your back because it's pulling and changing. And it also affects your feet, the ligaments in your feet too. So high heels also exert more pressure on your back joints and your pelvis, resulting in back pain, joint pain, and joint instability. Therefore, letting go of the high heels while pregnant can significantly help reduce back pain. And if you're really curious about some awesome remedies for sciatica and back pain, well, we have a podcast just made for you. So go check it out. Pregnancy Pecology podcast called Sciatica, Back Pain Relief. But here are some other amazing different ways in which you should give give them up, right? Number two, cramps on your muscle calves. Oof, worsening calf muscle cramps when you are regularly using high heels alter the position of the calf muscles. You will also notice that during your pregnancy, you have an increased amount of electrolyte imbalances. Do you get a lot of cramps in your first and second trimester? Well, most women do. Remember, the food is actually being slowed down your digestive tract so that you can actually exert or steal the most amount of electrolytes and the most amount of calorie consumption for everything that you eat. So we're really trying to break the food down and it gets even slower during pregnancy so that the baby has all of the hormones that they need and all of the nutrients in order to make a healthy, happy baby. In doing so, it really pulls a lot of the potassium out. So if you're not a person that has a high potassium diet, you'll notice that you will have cramps. And I always suggest this to pregnant moms who have really bad cramps. Instead of using sodium chloride, which is NaCl, switch it over to potassium chloride, KCl. It tastes the exact same and you can use it on your food, but you'll decrease the amount of cramping. And if you're a mama like me who had tons of cramps, I would suggest keeping mustard around. Yes, I said mustard, yellow mustard, squirt it on a spoon, eat it, especially while you're having a cramp, and it'll help to break it up. That's what the Olympians, um, the physicians who attend to the Olympians, what they do on the sidelines to make sure that their athletes don't get horrible cramps because that is their livelihood. So I'm just taking it right out of their playbook. All right, number three, why you shouldn't be wearing high heels, altered balance. So pregnancy hormones and gaining extra weight while you're pregnant lowers your ankle strength and reduces the ability to maintain your balance of your body. Wearing high heels increases your likelihood of losing balance and potentially falling. So this can make you, your unborn, uh, sustain a potential injury and is also the reason why we highly recommend that you don't wear high heels. Now, during the first trimester, most of most people don't even know that you're pregnant in the first place, and you won't see a lot of these changes in weight distribution until the second and the third trimester. Number four, let's talk about the the horrible, the M word, okay? I don't even like saying it. I know that we've done other podcasts about miscarriages, so I do want to let you know that there we did a whole podcast based around blood, right? Whether or not you should be experiencing bleeding and what does each of the bleeding mean during the different trimesters and before. But the big M word is miscarriages. And we have learned that one out of every 10 women uh, will experience a miscarriage. So are you that one in 10 or have you? Well, decrease the risk of it. And that's, um, again, miscarriage is one of the most common things um, that every pregnant woman um, hates to hear Unfortunately, it's happened um, to my family members, it's happened to my friends, and I know all too well the, the psychological devastation as well as the physical devastation a miscarriage can have. So you want to avoid anything that could increase your chances of having a miscarriage, and that includes wearing high heels. Now, I'm not saying they're directly related or correlated, but high heels threaten your pregnancy by making reducing your balance, okay, and your capacity to lean, twist, fall. And if you fall, the unborn baby that you have can sustain potential injuries and it's just not worth it. So again, don't do anything that could potentially cause a contusion um, on the actual, uh, with the baby, uh, with the placenta, because again, it is still a living, breathing organism, okay? It's, it's an organ system. So if it 
sustains a, a bump, guess what's going to happen? It's going to increase bleeding and it could potentially um, be lethal in the sense of the placenta bleeds. And then unfortunately it clots off and so the baby is unable to get the nutrients needed. Number five, lower limb swelling. So wearing high heels while you're pregnant won't be very com comfortable like they were before. And let's admit it, girls. Okay, the cutest shoes you have, are they comfortable or uncomfortable? They're uncomfortable. Of course they are. Why? Because they're made for fashion. You know, beauty is pain. Isn't that what we were taught? They do. They worsen your swelling of your ankles, your feet, and your legs, which are very common in pregnancy. During your third trimester, girl, you got some cankles, okay? So again, that's very, very common. And the reason why is because your body has increased the amount of fluid that it is increasing. And it does that because we're expecting to lose 500 to a liter of blood during delivery, whether that's actual vaginal delivery or whether that's a C-section. But I will tell you the accumulation of fluid and swelling of your lower limbs may cause a lot of pain and also your venous congestion. Like that's the reason why you have really bad stuffy nose, for example, that venous congestion, which is inside, is also happening at the lower extremities because it's the farthest point away from your heart. As another tertiary uh, entity, that venous congestion, your valves that usually kind of like speed humps, okay, um, the valves actually are not as functional as they used to be. So wearing compression stockings are actually a really great idea for pregnant women. And I would highly suggest, I know that there's this company called Life Socks and they are wonderful. Um, they actually exert 20 to 30 um, PSI or amount of pressure that you need in the lower extremities. And these lower extremities really help to push that blood and move it all forward. So the best thing that I can tell you is that there are five different reasons as to why you shouldn't. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to sacrifice looking cute. You can always find something that is more free flowing so that your feet can breathe, whether that is, you know, whether that's using cute shoes. I would suggest um, try not to have any type of platforms or anything. Keep them lower to the ground. You have a decreased risk of twisting your ankle and things of that nature. But Remember, your body is changing um, from your ligaments to your feet to the actual amount of inflammation that you see in your feet. So I would highly recommend just be beautiful, be pregnant. You have this gorgeous glow anyway and accentuate those assets. Um, you don't really have to go and pump yourself up with those high heels. Growing up. On a Tuesday? One puke story. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I was paddle boarding one day. And yes, I was not very far along pregnant, but my husband thought it would be a really great idea to go paddle boarding, something that we've been doing every weekend since the beginning of when we started dating. All of a sudden, I started feeling like a little nauseous and I thought there's no way that I can be seasick on a paddleboard. Well, I went, he looked at me and I looked at him back and all of a sudden, all I see is I grab for the paddle. I looked up at him with these fear in my eyes and I just started puking all over my paddleboard. Problem is, do you know how hard it is to clean a paddleboard while you're trying to, while you're trying to balance? Well, unfortunately, that's what happened in that story. Thank you, DJ, for that hilarious puke story. Remember to keep sending them in. So one day I was eating lots of granola and I just couldn't get enough of it. I guess my body was craving something nutty. The only thing that I could do was I kept adding raisins and other very weird hard shaped items, which it wasn't a problem until the girls decided that they wanted to take me out for brunch. As I was going out for brunch, all I know is the next thing we were sitting waiting for appetizers and all I could remember was this weird sensation of like itching in the back of my throat. Well, that's what happened. All of a sudden in the middle of my salad, I gave up my cookies and the only thing that I could think of is, well, it kind of looks like miso salad dressing. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah G for that hilarious big story. Super gross. Third puke story is... 
third puke story, which you definitely have to hear about, is all fr- comes all the way from Washington State. Washington State says, I was freezing cold and there's nothing that I could do in order to get warm. So I decided that I was going to secretly wrap myself up in a blanket, and then run into a nice hot bath. So I started running the water. Well, the problem is, is I fell asleep really, I fell asleep hard. When I woke up, I realized that the entire floor was covered in water. As soon as I put my feet inside, like off of the bed, I then started immediately getting woozy feeling and then I had to pee. So I ran over, went to go shut off the water and then here it came. I was a puking little princess, now no longer cold, but nice and hot. Thank you, Elaine from Washington for that hilarious puke story. That is absolutely disgusting. If you have a puke story for me that you just can't wait to share, Send it to me, pukeology, P-U-K-E-O-L-O-G-Y, at nomonagia.com. Again, that's pukeology at nomonagia.com. And I can't wait to hear your hilarious puke stories. (laughs) Tips and tricks to stop the up chuckle that you need. So I know you're looking for amazing remedies to help your feet get back to the way that they used to be. So what kind of advice would you give a pregnant woman? Well, here's the best thing to do when you're pregnant to avoid wearing high heels. But if you really can't get rid of the high heels, then take this advice for like the next set. Number one, wear low heels during the first trimester. During this period, pregnancy hormones are relatively low. And your muscles are less stretched, and so are your ligaments. So you have the highest chance of being a fashion runway uh, with those low-heeled shoes. Number two, practice wearing sturdier low heel shoes. And again, any time that your heel can actually be wider instead of pointed like a high heel, you have an increased chance of being much more stable. Wearing loose and comfortable shoes This is will help you reduce the amount of swelling on your feet. Let go of the stilettos or those kitten type of heels that are very, very thin. This will reduce your capacity to maintain your balance. Take breaks when you have to when you're wearing high heels throughout the day. This will allow your feet to relax before wearing heels again. Now, don't stand for very long while wearing high heels during pregnancy. Instead, sit regularly. And not only that, but whenever you are going to remove your feet from the high heels, don't plan on putting them back on because you will have swelling in your lower appendages. Try replacing your high heels with flats during the day. This way, you let your body set a little bit, and if you'd like to, put your feet into some ice water. This will help to reduce swelling in that generalized area and will really help to kind of make everything better. If you are experiencing significant back pain, here's some home remedies for a pregnancy with back pain. Or you can just go visit Why Is My Sciatica So Bad? Pregnancy Pecology Podcast. Number one, wear low-heeled and sturdier shoes for with better arch support. Go get measured. Go to a good feet store or something like that where they can actually measure it and get those inserts that affect your feet properly. Learn to maintain good posture, such as standing up straight, holding your chest tight, and avoid locking your knees. They have these posture positioners where you literally wear them it kind of looks like a bra strap on the back and reminds you to put your your shoulder blades backwards as you stand stand up girls you are growing a baby and that's something that not all superheroes can say practice sleeping on your side while bending one or both knees and then perform moderate regular physical exercise such as swimming walking And anything that's what's considered low impact, trust me, you'll feel so much better when you kick out your heels. Your back pain will not be as bad. Always make sure that you're stretching, okay? And don't just stretch your low back, but also you have to remember, you're also stretching your calves, okay? So calf pain happens while you're wearing high heels. Massage your calf muscles. This 
might really help. They also have prenatal massages that are very good. Remember, you can get a prenatal massage up until you're considered full, you're considered full term. And at full term, there are pressure points that are in your feet. So I would withhold that because they could actually put you or induce you into labor faster than what everyone else was expecting. Now, while high heels may be very fancy, wearing them while pregnant is not the greatest ideas. But try being cautious when you are wearing high heels, especially if you can't kick the habit. It is a beautiful addition to your amazing outfit, but you're wearing confidence. And with confidence being pregnant and growing a baby, now that, there's nothing sexier than that during pregnancy. Thanks again, ladies, for listening to Pregnancy Picology Podcast. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm giving you the real medical truth behind why you shouldn't wear high heels. And if you do, what are some amazing different types of alternatives, as well as home remedies for your back, your feet, and your calves. If you love what I'm saying, or if you just love Dr. Puke Nomo, which is me, please give me hearts for likes and or share it with all your Prego friends. Thanks again for listening to episode 66. Can I wear high heels during pregnancy? See you next time, pregnant ladies. Pukeology Podcast, edutainment at its finest.